What's going on people, my name is Batman, and I'm using some Iron Banner footage for this video which I thought would be relevant because Iron Banner is in theory what PvP would look like at its most unbalanced uh, because it's intentionally imbalanced, but just looking at the footage, it's very hard to tell the difference. In fact, the only difference I noticed in-game was that there was just an increase in what I would call WTF deaths, where you're just like, how the fuck did he beat me? Oh, must be because he has stronger equipment. Makes sense, in the Iron Banner at least. I know there's a lot of controversy right now about Bungie not being entirely upfront about the degree to which the Iron Banner alters the cap on your gear stats. There's been a couple videos demonstrating fairly explicitly that a level 4 with the rifle from the very first level in the game can still do very well against level 30s and such and whatnot and this has upset most people who are expecting such low level players to basically get one-shotted by the level 30s which is of course how it would be if the stat caps were in fact turned off but obviously they aren't it seems they're just slightly modified uh, so I'm not gonna dive too far into that controversy it is what it is I think it's pretty obvious why they went this route they had to protect casuals and low-level players because they wanted to make sure those players had equal access to the Iron Banner event itself that's why the stat caps are not fully removed that's why this event is not as dramatically different from regular crucible as everyone wanted it to be. We all know it's because of catering to casuals. We all know it's not going to stop. I don't even have the energy to get mad about it anymore. The Iron Banner is not what Bungie said it would be, period. Uh, but the Iron Banner event will come to a close and we will return to the regular Crucible and outside of this Iron Banner controversy I see the Crucible as one of the saving graces of Destiny. I think it's a very enjoyable multiplayer combat experience. I've had a lot of fun on it and obviously in the past I've criticized it for basically not having enough stuff uh, including but not limited to vehicles, playlists, and maps. But that's stuff that I think can be easily remedied. With this video, I want to take a look at one of the more systemic problems with Destiny PvP, which is its tendency to piss people off really bad. Destiny multiplayer has received a steady amount of criticism over balancing issues. Now, some of this criticism is absolutely warranted and very fair. Some of it I think is simply misplaced, and still some of it I think is entirely unfair. So, the elephant in the room when you're having this conversation about balancing is obviously supers. The super is essentially guaranteed free kills. Now, any kill that is free free always disproportionately benefits weaker players because a weaker player has more to gain from free kills that they otherwise would not obtain uh, as opposed to a stronger player who would in theory attain said kills legitimately anyways without them being free. So a weak player with a super can kill a significantly stronger player whereas the stronger player doesn't need a super to kill the significantly weaker player simply because he can outplay said weaker player through traditional methods very consistently because as I've talked about before the actual gunplay itself in Destiny does retain a relatively high skill gap largely based on the high value of headshots and the radar eliminating most chances for free kills via just seeing someone who doesn't see you and these traits are of course magnified intensely when compared to a game like Call of Duty. So the super brings a bit of equilibrium between the weaker and the stronger players I would argue. They do ease the skill gap's affliction on the weak to an extent, but there is still some skill and rewarding of that skill involved in both the attainment and application of supers. Although everyone's super is guaranteed to charge eventually, and usually at least once a match, if you play well, you will get your super quicker. It kind of works like a kill streak that way. The better you play, the more supers you will have been able to use by the end of the match, or more simply put, skill is rewarded with more supers more frequently. And your talent is further rewarded in choosing the right time and place to deploy said super. It's at the very least one guaranteed kill, but those players intelligent enough to save it for the multi on a flag or a relic or a really satisfying interceptor kill will of course see a higher reward for that thought process. Now all of these supers can be used to counter one another whether my Nova Bomb destroys the Titan's defender shield or a gunslinger's golden gun plows a blade dancer or a titan titan smashes a warlock who sunsingers back to life and melees his bitch ass in the face for the kill. So I would argue that because everybody has access to these supers and that these supers can counter one another on top of the fact that to one degree or another they reward higher levels of skill that the supers themselves are in fact balanced. That being said, I understand deeply why so many people get so enraged by supers. Being on the receiving end of a free kill, especially in a game with a TTK this high, is always going to be super frustrating, even when you get to do it just as often to other people. I like to think of it as a chaotic balance. It's kind of like Modern Warfare 2 before everyone discovered the one-man army danger close noob tubes. In Modern Warfare 2, you know, everything was overpowered 
And so it was an overpowered balance. It was like a frustrating balance where everyone got pissed off at everything, whether it was Commando or LMGs, Noob Tubes, the Kill Streaks, Heartbeat Sensors, the UMP, the FAMAS. Everything was so OP that there was sort of a chaotic balance where it was kind of fair, but it was pissing everybody off. That is, of course, until they discovered One Man Army Danger Close Noob Tubes. That threw everything into a whole other level of unbalanced chaos. So that's, it's kind of similar, I think, in that way, in a very abstract way, just in the sense that it's a chaotic, infuriating balance. It is a balance that still pisses people off. And that similarly sums up my attitude towards shotguns and fusion rifles, both of which are often decried as unbalanced tools of treachery. And although I would agree there are some shotguns and definitely some fusion rifles that can manage one-shot kills at far too long a distance, I think in general the weapon types are in fact balanced in the same ways that supers are balanced, because everyone has access to them and they do reward skills at some level or another. The fusion rifle is about timing, the shoddy is about positioning. And they counter one another. If they had a bounty available for trade kills, I would have completed it several times over, putting my shoddy up against the shoddy of another and his body. At close ranges, they are dominant because they are supposed to be. When using these weapons, the challenge is keeping the fight within the range of dominance your weapon holds. For just as you are guaranteed a kill within close range, you are likewise guaranteed a death outside of that close range. These weapons are high risk, high reward, putting the two possible extremes of in-game outcome side by side. But but they are one-shot kills, and that's infuriating. It infuriates me just as often as it infuriates you. I promise you that. One-shot kills are hated in every game, because when you die so quickly, you do not feel you had a chance to fight back. And the truth is, you didn't. The fight was won long before bullets left their respective chambers. But you cannot recognize such a thing in that instant as your body falls to the floor and you're forced to play the part of an audience for your assailant. It feels instinctively unfair. People hate shotguns passionately in every game. And it's not about balance, it's about death. And of course, the instinctively perceived unfairness is exacerbated heavily by the elongated time to kill in Destiny. But the Crucible does have one inherent imbalance, which is that the auto rifle is always the clearly superior choice to any other primary weapon. There are a few mistakes that I think Bungie made in regards to this problem. The first is that all of the different types of primaries essentially have the same time to kill when used to their max potential. This is a similar practice to what you saw in the Halo games. The assault rifle, in theory, was the better weapon for close quarter situations, but not because it had a higher TTK than the DMR or BR up close. If if the DMR and the AR went head to head and each player landed all the shots, the guns had roughly the same TTK. It's just that the AR was much easier to use in those close quarter situations, whereas the DMR was much easier to use at long range because it could scope in. However, in Destiny, they've tried to do the same thing, it feels like, by keeping all of the damage tables largely flat in the regular Crucible playlist, not the Iron Banner, except this time around, the assault rifle can scope in, right? Every weapon can scope in. What it comes down to is ease of use. I think they tried to do what they did in Halo and give every weapon roughly the same time to kill, so long as they're used, you know, properly. If you're using like a semi-auto, you know, you're timing the shots perfectly. And then use other advantages such as fire rate or long range abilities to provide some meaningful advantages uh, and differences between the weapons. But they failed because they didn't fully understand how drastically the ability to hold the L trigger and aid with any weapon at any time would change the dynamics of the game. In Call of Duty or Battlefield or most other MP shooters, the semi-auto and burst fire weapons usually have a distinct TTK or range advantage or both. But the trade-off is that they are harder to use. In Destiny, the semi-auto and burst fire weapons don't have any meaningful advantage. They end up with roughly the same time to kill as the auto rifles, but they are still significantly harder to use than the auto rifles consistently. And because the auto rifle can scope in, they don't have the range advantage either. Destiny maps are sized very similar to that of Halo. They are relatively small maps when compared with other MP games. In Halo, some guns had a range advantage only because many other guns couldn't ADS period, and this allowed there to be range advantages even on maps that were very small. But when you can ADS, with every weapon on maps as small as Destiny's maps, it suddenly makes it very hard to consistently maintain a distinct range advantage. If the semi-auto and burst fire weapons don't have a distinct range and or TTK advantage, what's the point to using them? I think that with the hand cannons in general, they were trying to channel the pistol from Halo 1, which packed a punch, but again, that pistol had roughly the same TTK as the AR in AR range, 
but people opted for the pistol because it had a scope and precision damage that allowed for critical headshots. But in Destiny, everything can scope in and everything has the ability to land those critical headshots. It negates the primary advantages of other weapons in this system that they've used successfully in the past but failed to implement successfully here. So in that regard, I think the gun balance is a bit off in this game because the AR is the dominant weapon type. However, something I don't agree with that I see a lot in the comments is this notion that PvP is unbalanced because higher level players have legendary gear and they get put into to a match with players using uncommon and rare gear. Now legendary gear and above obviously has an advantage, but that advantage isn't based on stats like the Iron Banner, it's usually because the higher level gear has better perk options. You know, higher level players with higher level gear have access to better perks and abilities. And this does give them an advantage, but that's not any different from any other multiplayer game with a progression system. In COD and Battlefield, you level up, and as you level up, you unlock better perks and better equipment, whether it's sights or faster reload or faster ADS or better countermeasures on your helicopter. The higher level player always has advantages, and people don't usually get too pissed off about it in those games because they accept that it's just a natural part of the progression of the game. The low level ones in both those games who don't even have custom classes unlocked, they can still compete with the high levels and kill them regularly. They just don't have access to the same capabilities and that's how it plays out in Destiny PvP as well But there seems to be a double standard here among many players You know a, a distinct difference between what's fair in Destiny and what's fair in, in Battlefield and Call of Duty Anyways, I know you know some of you maybe many of you might not disagree with some or many of the points I'm making in this video, but the main point that I think we can all agree on that I want to make is that there is a casual inside all of us there is always going to be something in every game that pisses some of us off. It goes back to the noob combo in Halo 2. There will always be something that aggravates people. Discontent and anger drives people to make their views heard more because they lust for a change to the perceived discrepancies. But contentment is just the opposite. The content player rarely feels the need to make his views known because he's fine with things just the way they are. So long as we as a community continue to collectively voice our anger with everything and refuse to show praise for anything, these games and the developers will continue to cater to our worst qualities and to the worst kinds of players among us. If the Iron Banner was what Bungie had originally intended it to be, what they originally said it would be, there would be millions of low-level players screaming that they don't have equal access to the Iron Banner rewards because they get shit on every time they play Iron Banner because they don't stand a chance against the kids that already have level 30 because they have no life and play this game all day while the rest of us have to go to school. And it's not fair that this player is better than me just because he put more time into the game or something like that. It's lose-lose from the developer standpoint and that's on us. If we want to be treated like adults, we have to start acting the part too. Please rate, this is Batman signing out.